Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, tonight is all about setting out our provision for the most stable students. And what we're hoping to do throughout the evening is to understand how we identify the most stable students um, and what this means for them and to develop an understanding of the school's provision for the most able students and to be introduced to something that we're calling the supplementary curriculum which Mr West will talk through um, in a few moments time. So just in terms of an introduction I'm Martin Dawson I'm deputy head of school and my responsibility is for progression and that's all encompassing progression in terms of grades, progression in terms of character, personal development um, and everything that is included with that. This evening represents um, an important part, I suppose, of our partnership, um, school parents working together for the best interests of students. And what I do hope is that you find the information we present useful and informative and that actually it may prompt some discussions at home some questions which we are always more than happy to answer if you have them. Within the school and students will be familiar with this formula, it is not as Mr Aldred often says mathematically correct, however um, it is our formula for amazing outcomes for students and I suppose this evening falls into that part of the equation which is extraordinary compassion and support. D those things that we do um, in addition to our lesson provision to ensure that students are supported as well as possible throughout school and not just supported but in in the case of the most able students probably the more appropriate word there would be to be challenged. I'm sure over the last few kind of months especially during lockdown um, you had quite an opportunity to have a look at the school website a lot of our work um, that we set for students was based on there there was information on there Hall of Fame nominees and those that were achieved that accolade are kind of presented on there and if you have had a chance to look around the website hopefully what you've noticed is that a lot of the language that is used is aspirational in the sense that we are always talking about students trying to be the absolute best that they can be and not thinking about their position in the school in wider society um, as there being any glass ceilings or barriers that what we want is students to have the aspiration to do as well as they possibly can and go above and beyond. You've probably also seen the school performance tables. Um, this is the list from 2019 and you'll notice that on that list of Nottinghamshire schools we were placed sixth. That attests to the hard work and effort of students over the course of the last few years and of staff as well in supporting them and what we want as a school ideally is to be at the top of that list because actually as great as that would be for the school it would be even better for the students because what that would reflect is that they have achieved fantastically well but it isn't just about academic grades and results it's already also about character and personal development as well and we want students to be the best that they can do in everything that they do and in particular for the most able students we want them to excel. We want them to not just aspire to do well, but actually to come to expect that success and really develop their sense of self-belief so that they leave us as really confident young people going off into further education, higher education, the world of work um, to be successful young adults. We often talk in school about attitude to learning, um, which is our kind of vehicle, I suppose, for developing student character. And we often refer to um, points such as this, where we were reflecting on failure and whether failure is a bad thing or actually a good thing. For the most able students, it's often the case that throughout their time in school, they've been really successful. And often it's not until they get into secondary school that they come up to barriers where they find themselves really challenged and actually start to experience failure. And for those students in particular, it's important that they recognise that failure is actually part of being successful. And part of our support for the most able students is about that character development to ensure that, in truth, when they leave us, they recognise that being successful isn't just about school. It's not about just getting those results in year 11 or year 13, but actually, as the quote on the screen suggests, 
it requires constant effort, vigilance and re-evaluation. So why do we have the most able policy in school? It is to reinforce what I've already talked about in terms of ensuring that students succeed to the best of their abilities. And we've got several objectives in mind in setting that policy out and, and, and hopefully you found it useful to have that policy sent out to you um, last week so that you could see some of the details of what we're doing. Really, we want to identify the most able students to themselves, to parents, but also to staff as well. We want an accurate register of those students in each year group so we, we know clearly who those students are. And we want to be able to get information out to staff in a timely manner so that they can best support those students in lessons by adapting their teaching, making sure that lessons are challenging, engaging and ensure that they can reach their full potential. We also want to be able to identify that group of students in terms of being the ones that will get particular focus in terms of those aspirations and to then also have that list so that we can do things like we are doing tonight to liaise with parents to make sure that we can have that supportive dialogue and that you can kind of be partners with us in our journey to making sure that those uh, most able students do as well as they possibly can. So how do we identify who the most able students are? The policy that we sent out did kind of set this information out, but I thought it was worthwhile talking it through. Our starting point, and I will come back to this point in a moment, our starting point is that we look at the students within school that have the top 20% of scaled scores. So they are our most able students, the top 20% within each year group. However, the register of most able students is reviewed regularly and it's not the case that if a student in their prior attainment at primary school did not feature in that top 20% that they can never make it into that category. And, and actually we've got a number of students who are in that category as most able students because of how they've performed since joining us um, in secondary school. And we keep that register updated, achievement leads for each year group, constantly review the monitoring data and speak to staff to see if we need to add any other students to that most able register. Once a student has been identified as most able, they keep that designation with them all the way through school until they leave in year 11 or year 13. And so, it's not a case that they lose it and therefore they stop being most able. That cohort, that group on the register will only grow during the time that that uh, group of students is with us in school. And what we make sure happens is that if a student is added to the register as a most able student throughout the year, we update staff so that they can best support students in their lessons and make those adaptations as, as required. So ultimately our aim is for the most able students to ensure that they leave us to go off to the most aspirational destinations that they can. And that might well be that students secure places as some have in recent years at places like Oxford University or Cambridge University or similar universities more locally. It might be that those students leave us to take up an aspirational higher apprenticeship with a company like IBM or Boots. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to leave to join either of those because we have had students who've been particularly able, who've done fantastically well in their exams, but have then secured positions um, in terms of local companies working in trades like electricians and in the police, who've then gone on to secure amazing outcomes in terms of their working life. And we know this because often it's those most stable students that will come back to us and say, five years having, having left, can I come back, can I talk to students, can I pass on some of what I found out from being at the Garibaldi School and being supported? And that's always really welcome and is a, is a fantastic tool for encouraging other students in similar positions to really lift their sights and kind of raise those expectations of what they can get out of school. So at this point, what I'd like to do is to hand over to uh, Mr West. Um, he's Year 10 Achievement Lead. He's responsible for most able students in school and what he's going to talk to you about is the provision that we're putting in place new for this year that we'd encourage as many of those most able students as possible to engage with. Thank you very much. Good evening everybody, thank you for your time this evening. I'm just going to spend a, a brief 
a bit of time going over our um, supplementary curriculum. Um, I'm going to give you a bit of an overview as to what, what it is and what it involves. Um, sort of look at the benefits for students um, and give you a bit of the lowdown really on, on, on the kind of task that we might set as part of it. Um, so on the screen now, what you can see, and this is included in the policy, it's an overview of, of how we envisage the different topics and tasks spanning out for each year group um, over the next academic year. Um, I'm going to explain in a second what the study skills and what the raised aspiration tasks and the subject specific tasks, tasks actually mean. Um, but ultimately, um, the subject task will be based around a subject and offer students the opportunity to explore a subject in more detail. Um, and the study skills and raise and aspirations tasks will focus on sort of skills that we don't explicitly teach at school um, in, the, in, in our usual curriculum, um, such as you know, the skill of annotating, um, the skill of taking effective notes, um, those kind of skills which we know are, are useful for university level study, um, but that aren't taught explicitly within the, the usual curriculum that we study in the classroom. So this slide gives you a bit of a breakdown as to what the supplementary curriculum involves at each point um, during the year. So it will run from next half term and each half term there'll be a, a new subject specific task and a new raising aspirations or study skills task. Now the subject specific tasks um, are quite exciting for us as staff because what it means is that we're, we're able to take a, an aspect of our subject that we really in, enjoyed and, and, and we're interested in at our university level study and we're able to sort of drop it down um, to the lower years of the school um, and give them a bit of a flavour for what it's like to study our subjects at university. So as a bit of an idea, um, the English task, which is the first um, subject specific task to come up um, in half term two in November, um, that deals with the, the idea of English as a global language, which is something that I studied and, and focused on um, in my work at university. So it, it, they are skills and they are topics that that a pitched at a high level that we're then able to sort of reduce down um, but keep the content largely the same um, to give students and most able students at the school a flavour for what it's like to study a subject in, in more detail. And these subject specific tasks will, will in, in making these staff will use a range of different resources. Um, these might be videos, these might be TED talks or speeches, journal articles, textbooks or guides, research materials and publications. Um, so we'll, we'll draw as staff on quite a broad range of, of material to give students um, an idea of, of, of what else is out there um, beyond sort of the PowerPoint or the revision guide um, they, that they might have as part of the usual curriculum in the classroom. Running alongside the subject specific task, each half term there'll also be a raising aspirations or study skills task. Um, now these kind of, as I mentioned at the start, these will focus on those academic level skills, note taking, annotation, academic writing, developing an argument, argument, um, structuring a speech, those kind of um, skills that, that can be applied across the board to any subject um, and really allow students to home in on the, the study skills um, that they might have already practiced a little bit, but, but not been taught explicitly. Um, and in making those, we, we'll use again a range of different resources that students won't have encountered before in the classroom, um, you know, videos, notes, explanations from, from universities themselves, or a range of help sheets and instructions that are relevant to that skill. Um, just as a bit of, of insight into to where this where this comes from, um, the, the, the supplementary curriculum and the idea of these um, study skills tasks in particular, um, they've been developed by us as a school and, and they're totally brand new for this year. But they are we've drawn on um, from discussions um, and reading from universities of Oxford, Cambridge and the University of Nottingham who run very similar to, um, sort of programmes, um, but in a different way. Um, but, but we hope that these tasks will be tailored to students at Garibaldi um, to develop the skills that, that we think um, they'll need to excel in sort of university life and sixth form life after their studies with us in year 11, um, going on to year 12 and 13 and beyond. So just a bit of background in terms of the logistics of it. Um, obviously, we're, we're not under any circumstances forcing any students to do anything um, in, in a sense. Essentially, we want them to opt in. Um, so hopefully, as I'll show you in a second, they'll be able to see the benefits of it. Um, we'll obviously encourage them to take part and make the most of the opportunity that they've been given, but it will be a very much opt in process. Um, ultimately, the, the amount of time that's gone into this from our school perspective, we want students to be able to invest time in it as well to make it, make it a success. Uh, what we don't want is students opting in um, and after a week saying, 
uh, or not doing the work. So, so I want to kind of make it really clear and I'll meet with students next week in year 10. The achievement leads will meet with students in other years just to make them them aware that, that it is a commitment and we expect if, if we expect to put the time in and, and make the tasks available, we also expect the work to be done as well. Um, so as I explained before, there's one subject specific task and one raising aspirations or study skills task for each half term. Half term two starts with English. We first of all move through the core subjects of English, maths and science. And then towards the end of this academic year, students will get a more broad range of, of, of subjects that they can choose from, um, which will be based around option subjects. And they'll have a chance to sort of dip in and out of subjects that they might have a, a personal interest in. We're running the supplementary curriculum entirely online um, and we want to capitalise really on, on the Microsoft Teams knowledge that students have. Um, so they'll be they'll be once they've opted in, if they choose to opt in, um, this this will be due to, to go live for students on the 2nd of November, the first day back after the half term break. Um, they'll be added to a team on Microsoft Teams um, where they can view the tasks straight away and start working on them. And it'll be very much a, the students have got the, the, the six weeks of the half term, that block of time to, to work their way through the tasks and complete them um, and then submit them at the end. OK, we might check in with them halfway through, but, but I think a key driver behind this and a key part of the character development is giving students, is putting the onus on students to manage their time effectively um, and, and to use their self-motivation to complete the tasks um, in their own allotted time. So in terms of the benefits for students, obviously I've had a lot of students come up to me this week and without without sort of giving this presentation, um, I, I just wanted to, to address this this um, quite clearly that there is benefits to students, not just um, in terms of it providing a flavour of what sixth form and university study feels like, um, in this sense, drawing on the independent study skills and allowing them to manage their time. But I think what's really interesting about this and what it allows students to do is it allows them to explore a topic beyond what they would normally learn in the classroom. Um, and if they do have a passion for a certain subject, um, we hope that the supplementary cur curriculum will give them a chance to develop that passion and that interest for a subject. Um, obviously the third bullet point touches on the ATL character traits. So obviously as a school, um, we want students to develop, you know, as as a, as, a, as completely as we can in terms of the character development as well. Um, and I think the supplementary curriculum offers a chance for students to practice and, and own all of the, the, the character traits from the ATL criteria. I've mentioned resilience there and willingness to learn, but ultimately um, it draws and, 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 and encourages them to display self-motivation um, and be determined um, and, and so on when they're doing these kind of tasks. In terms of feedback, um, we're, we're going to run this at the start um, in terms of for the um, for the aspirations tasks and the study skills tasks, we're asking students to peer up towards the end of, of the half term so we can peer assess these and then the, the feedback will be quality assured um, by the responsible teacher. Um, I'll get onto that in a second. I've kind of included a, a screenshot of the feedback table on the screen for you now so you can see. Um, and what's interesting to note is that this success criteria um, this is something that we've developed in partnership with universities, so we know that this success criteria draws on those kind of skills and those kind of those kind of competencies that we know university level study draws on, um, and they go from it understanding, communication, structure, and evidence. Um, so whilst they're all important skills for GCSE and A level study as well, they are kind of the the skills that universities look for in terms of um, awarding for success and identifying students that are able to to show these skills um, in their work. In terms of the subject specific tasks, so if I use the one for English, um, which will be starting for half term two as, as, as the example, um, again, the same kind of skills and competencies on the left hand side here, but we are grading those, um, the teacher responsible for, for the supplementary curriculum in the subject, um, will grade those themselves and I'll grade them based on university level criteria. Um, so if you notice along the top, you've got first, two, one, two, two and third. And those are the grading criteria that universities use when awarding degrees. So essentially we're, we're setting students up to, to aim as high as they can, um, developing skills and competencies that we know will set them up for success in life, but also we're grading it and, and we're demanding that students work at a level. Um, it's not going to be entirely commensurate with university level study, but it will be higher than, than, than sort of the expected standard at that point in time for their year group. 
In terms of what happens now, um, next week, achievement leads for the appropriate year group will meet with students to go through the supplementary curriculum in terms of Microsoft Teams side of it, and just to show them how it works. Um, and that all being well, will run on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday next week, and, and students will be made aware of when that where and when that will happen. And then students will be asked on the Thursday um, by their mentors whether they would like to opt in or not to the to the supplementary curriculum program. And from that point onwards, we can start making the sort of logistics um we can start the logistical task with regards to setting them up to go um on teams that brings us to the end of this live event and thank you for attending this evening um we've included emails on there uh, of myself which is bwest at garibaldischool.co.uk uh, mr dawson's email is on there as well uh, and, and the office email at the bottom um if you do have any questions please please do get in touch with us um we are more than happy to address those and answer those for you. Um, a recording of tonight's event will be uploaded onto the YouTube channel um, and we'll also add a link to the website as well for anybody that, that couldn't make it or if you wanted to check back in the video just to clarify anything that we've said. Thank you. <laughs>